Welcome to the third episode of our video series on cattle farmer training brought to you by the Current Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aimed to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode on energy and protein supplements covers body condition scores and the effect that poor conditions can have on cows. It will help you understand the need to wean calves at the correct age and weight, and also how and when energy and protein supplements should be used. Condition scores is used on a scale from one to five, where one is very low body condition, meaning the cow will likely not be able to walk due to being so thin and weak and five, which is the highest score, and cattle are extremely overweight with no ribs visible. You will also notice fat deposition under the tail and on the back. Body condition score, or BCS, is the key indicator of a cow's reproductive performance that you can use. Ideally, first calf heifers should not fall below a body condition score of three before calving. Cows in poor condition with a lower than three body score generally have a decrease in conception rates and in their immunity, which can lead to an increase in susceptibility to disease and becoming vulnerable to internal parasites. Cows that calf in a poor condition can have calves that are highly susceptible to internal parasites. The calves may also not get the required colostrum, the first milk thereby inhibiting calf growth and having a higher risk of calf mortality. The colostrum building phase starts 60 days before calving, so cows need to be on a good energy plan prior to calving. Colostrum quality is extremely important for the calf's long-term health. Weaning means that the calves are usually taken away from the cow at seven months of age with a weight of between 200 and 240 kilograms. It is important to note that it is recommended to wean a calf from the cow before the cow falls below a three body condition score. The most important thing when it comes to weaning is the weight of the calf. Weaning at a weight of 200 kilograms is safe. If calves are weaned too light, below 170 kilograms, they will battle to adapt and maintain a positive growth curve post weaning. The energy requirements of cattle depend on the cow's age, body size, and production stage as well as the environment. Energy is required for every single body function in cattle and especially important for animal production. If the energy requirements are not met, cattle health, growth, reproduction, and lactation decreases. Forages do not always provide enough energy, thus it is recommended to add energy supplementation programs to a herd at times of the year when the natural grazing is not meeting their needs. The most common energy feeds available are maize, wheat, sorghum, and composite energy leaks. When purchasing energy leaks, make sure you're supplying what is needed and that you seek professional guidance on what leaks are most suitable for your herd and environment. Remember, if done incorrectly, your entire herd may die. 
Energy leaks are typically fed to lactating cows that need the extra energy to keep feeding their calves and maintain body condition for reconceptions. Implementing a three-phase leak program for your herd would be a good option. The type and amount of nutrient demand for cattle will be determined by the seasons, production stage of the animal, and the state of grazing available. The nutritional value of grazing land thus differs as drastically as the environment in which they are found, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach to correct the nutritional deficiencies or imbalances in all the various pastures. For this reason, a number of supplementary feeds for ruminants are available from suppliers, like the three-phase leak program, which has been developed for a cow-calf system in areas where big differences occur in the nutritional value of summer and winter pastures, and where acute to moderate deficiencies in phosphorus occur. Supplementary leaks, and more especially ones with urea, must be fed with extreme care. If done incorrectly, your entire head can die. So make sure you get a nutritionist's advice or that of a professional from your local cooperative or representative before feeding any supplementary leaks to your head. The three-phase leak program constitutes phase one being summer and using wet season leaks. This period starts approximately four to six weeks after good rain. The felt is abundant, green, high in protein, highly digestible, and palatable. Phosphate and trace elements are the most limited nutrients on green natural felt, and the purpose of the wet season lick is to maximize growth. Phase 2. In winter, dry season licks are used. This period starts in autumn when temperatures start dropping. Rainfall declines and the felt grows at a slow rate. It is recommended that beef producers breach this period with a transitional leak, particularly in sour felt areas where summer and winter pastures vary considerably. The advantage of this practice is that the last phosphate supplement can still be given and animals become accustomed to the urea contained in the dry season leaks. As soon as plants are dormant and their nutritional value therefore poor, dry season leaks must be provided. Dry season felt is low in protein, poorly digestible and less palatable, causing lower grass intake. The primary deficiency is protein, or more specifically, nitrogen, for the rumen's microorganisms. Therefore, protein, and in particular, Degradable protein and non-protein nitrogen are the most important nutrients in winter leaks to maintain body condition. Various leaks are available depending on the individual farmer's environment and preferences. Phase 3 is from August to October, so late dry season supplements and production leaks are used. In the late dry season, felt is usually dry and very low in protein, resulting in low digestibility. Intake is also affected with little available material. The purpose of a supplement is to limit a loss of mass and energy, so protein must be provided by production leak. This period is the most expensive and producers must therefore be very selective when providing leaks. Roman microbes need a diet that contains at least some crude protein. If your animals do not have this available from natural grazing, you will need to subsidize it with purchased leaks or stored fodder. During summer when the grasses are green and of good quality, there will more than likely be enough protein available and you will not need to supplement. Once the first frost hits, the felt quality quickly decreases and supplementation will need to take place. Protein supplements are necessary to improve forage digestibility by rumen microbes when cows are fed low quality forages like winter sourfeld. In sweet felt areas, you might not need to supplement at all 
due to grasses holding quality more effectively. You can check the protein balance by looking at the animal's dung. If it is hard and stacked, more protein is needed to help the microbes break down the roughage more efficiently. If it is too loose, there may be an excess of protein which is causing an overdrive. The main protein sources on a farm come from green grass. The cheapest form of protein is urea, but that comes with warnings and responsibilities as highlighted before. For this reason, a number of supplementary feeds for ruminants are available from suppliers. A protein source is important for optimal microbial growth and function inside the rumen. Bypass proteins are essential for structural growth in young stock. When choosing a leak, Consider whether you are feeding young stock or mature animals. Decide whether you need bypass protein or if you can feed urea proteins and find out what other feed is available. Urea leeks need long length roughage to be fed with it, like hay bales or felt. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.